Hey, what's up, boys and girls and all others associated? This is Coach Zache of Pastoria City, also the official guest sponsor of the Slateport City Squirtle Squad, as I've done oh, enough of their commentaries. Uh, so I'm going to hop in here. We're going to have a soundtrack of Beethoven's Symphony No. 6, his pastoral symphony, the second movement, accompanied with me practicing the bassoon part along with it. So there's a couple mistakes in there. Just ignore them. All right, I'm hitting play on the battle now. So I haven't watched this battle yet. Didn't really look at the team preview going into it. Uh, haven't really watched a lot of Nick's battles because I don't face him. So I know he's got Feeny. That's all I know. Uh, sends out Reptar, the Tyranitar. We get Scary Terry out, one of my favorite nicknames in the league. For the longtime listeners, they know this. Uh, I don't know what set anyone is running, so we're just going to go ahead and guess. Um, Aerodactyl faces the threat of Thunder Punch or Stone Edge coming from Tyranitar, who's probably going to capitalize on that switch and set up rocks. Um, so he goes ahead and switches to Baboom. Oh, Avalanche. Interesting. So he was banking on the faster Aerodactyl to give him Avalanche for the super effective. Now Baboom, we've seen him set up in the past and do some serious damage, and of course he can hit Tyranitar with some four times um, effective fighting type moves, stab, drain punch. So he goes ahead and goes into Echo, Tapu Fini, who's the logical choice to counter because it resists both the stabs and is able to hit with a four times effective Moon Blast most likely. Um, so drain punch is going to come out and not do very much damage. Um, at this point, I'll ex expect Baboom to switch out, um, possibly into Magnazone. Works as a very strong counter for Feeny. Um, outside of Nature's Madness, there's not a lot Feeny can do to hurt Magnazone very much. Um, since you both have leftovers and the sand is up, this turn is taking forever. So Baboom comes back. And we get Danger Zone, the Magnazone, the Kenny Loggins. Uh, so yeah, goes for the predictable moon blast. Of course, it'd be a stupid move not to. Uh, it's not going to hit for very much, but we are going to get the special attack drop, which would lead me, if I were using the Magnazone, to Volt Switch out, because it's probably running Analytic. I know he's run that in the past. Um, so Nick pulls Echo out, probably to go, okay, into Reptar. I was thinking possibly Excadrill to catch it, but then it'll be trapped by... Magnazone and Danger Zone goes for the Flash Cannon, which was a smart move, able to catch Excadrill on the switch, able to catch Tyranitar on the switch for super effective, and still going to hit Tapu Fini for some very serious damage. Um, Fini and Tapu Koko are annoying in that they both resist steel with their secondary types, so they don't have that glaring weakness. Um, Tyranitar goes for the Earthquake, which would uh, easily catch Magnazone, um, but does decent damage to Pangoro, not enough to kill it or anything. And he goes into Lancelot the Bee Drill. Um, and Baboom gets a sword stance up, which can be very deadly if this continues to happen. Now, the problem Baboom is going to have here is living a. Um, it won't be super effective, but it'll be a neutral hit bug move from Mega Bee Drill, so he does switch out um, into. Blondie, which is an interesting choice to tank that, because now it's going to take a uh, super effective bug move if he goes for the the U-turn. Um, we'll see after this Mega Evolution. Mega Beedrill's pretty clean, dude. I don't love the green, but yeah. So this is going to do some serious damage to Blondie. I wouldn't be surprised if it KOs. It does KO. Um, that's the nature of Mega Beedrill. I use it a lot in Let's Go, which you know is probably the peak of all metagame, so... I know a lot about Mega Beedrill, I would say. So he goes ahead and goes into Echo, which is a good catch-all mid-ground pivot, because there's not a lot that can do to it that he can't switch something into, um, especially having Excadrill in the back still. And he goes into Spearmint, a nice counter for Feeny, able to hit with either, uh, mostly probably a super effective grass move, because with the Misty Terrain up, it's not going to be able to set any statuses, which Celebi is uh, good at setting. So, goes for the Reflect. The Toxic Croak against Celebi isn't my favorite switch. So he gets the Fake Out. Um, fake Out with a Life Orb I've never <laughs> loved, unless it's needed. Uh, poison Jab's not going to do too much damage to Celebi. 
Oh, I guess it does. Never mind. I guess the psychic not resist poison. Huh. I always would have said it does. Um, but now Celebi is going to either be able to switch, which it does, or it'll be able to fire off the four times effective psychic move. But we get a Nido Queen, who of course can resist anything that the young dab can throw out to it. Uh, Toxicroak was my brother's favorite Pokemon in Gen 4. Um, so yeah, Nido Queen can eat that. She's going to be able to force a switch or get the KO on Young Dab. So she forces the switch, and no one on Nick's team really loves taking a hit from Nido Queen. Buddy, of course, will um, be able to take something, but not too strong of it. Yeah. So Buddy goes down instantly. I guess there we go. Psychic does not resist poison. I would have absolutely told you it does. Um, Reptar comes out. It's going to be able to fire off an Earthquake to hit super effective on Nido Queen, but Nido Queen's got a substantial amount of bulk. However, Nido Queen has Focus Blast, and this is like seeing a double rainbow. It hits. <laughs> so even in the sand with the boosted uh, special defense, it's going to take down Tyranitar. Um, Pop Tart comes out, and Pop Tart's not going to be able to take a hit very well from Nido Queen as well. I anticipate Nido Queen surviving this with. <laughs> that is where your soul broke, Nick, is it? That's where. Um, I've seen a man killed this day. Nido Queen lived with exactly one HP, for the record. Um, and is going to take Excadrill out. Excadrill was the one who really would be able to counter most of the things on this team. And it's gone. So now he's going to have to rely on the power of the young dab. Uh, luckily, his reflect wears off, but... I don't think this is going to end well. Scary Terry is going to come out, and it has it threatens with a very high speed tier, a very decent attack tier, and super effective stab flying moves, which will not be kind to the rather frail Toxicroak weak to them. So we see Mega Aerodactyl, our classic Disney villain. Um, he's going to get hit with the Sucker Punch. It's going to do a pretty solid amount of damage, and Scary Terry actually goes for the Earthquake rather than an aerial ace or anything, which will obviously take Young Dab out. He's out of here. Super effective. Um, I'm a little surprised that fighting doesn't resist. I feel like everything resists everything now. Um, so Echo comes out. Uh, it's going to force out Mega Aerodactyl. There's not very much that Mega Aerodactyl can do to uh, Tapu Fini. There's not very much that very many people can do to Tapu Fini. That's why it's such a massive defensive threat and a pretty good offensive threat. So it goes into Spearmint, who's going to eat the Scald like it's her job. Um, and now I'm anticipating an offensive grass move from Spearmint. Either that or she'll reset the screens back up. But at this point, I don't know if the screens are necessary. So out comes Lancelot, who eats any grass move. This is a nice uh, pivot core if you're going to have any two Pokemon left. And Reflect does come back out. So Casey's going ahead and playing this game safe up until the end of it. Um, the U-turn will kill Celebi through the Reflect, no question. Uh, it's four times effective. On actually, base 100 defense is pretty good defense. But we see Echo pops back out. And probably Magnezone would be my best guess for not having watched it before. And it is Magnazone, and Magnazone actually will be able to deal some serious damage to both of them if the the Beedrill is not running Drill Run. Uh, Brick Break will do some damage, but I don't think it'll do quite enough. And he Volt Switches out anyway with an Analytic Boost to get the kill. I assume Analytic because it does that amount of damage. It's either that or it's Specs. Um, and Scary Terry doesn't fear anything Beedrill does at all. So Lancelot's going to come out and it's going to fall pretty handily to Scary Terry. Um, yeah, I thought that the soul breaking moment would be the Focus Blast hit, but it was definitely the Nido Queen living on 1 HP. And actually, ending the game with a Stone Edge hit is kind of uh, rubbing a little bit of salt in the wound. So. If you ever want to see a dead body, just watch this video again. It really is. It's not even that bad of a massacre. It's just 
the most disheartening massacre I've ever seen, really. Um, all right, catch me week 12. I'm battling Cheryl, back where I started with the league. There's a good chance I'll be doing Casey's commentary again, so you'll catch me at least once on the mic, possibly twice. Uh, peace out. <laughs>